Hi friends, this is Caitlin. Welcome back. Today we're going to be using the Just Plain Awesome stamp set from Lawn Fawn to create a pop-up platform Father's Day card. Now before we go ahead and jump in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that way you never miss out on crafty inspiration. I have new videos out every Friday afternoon and I would love for you to come hang out with me. So I am going to be starting off by building out my pop-up platform base. So we're going to need to cut, die cut this large platform piece twice. And I'm cutting it from a heavier weight. Um, I think it's about a hundred pound black cardstock. That's going to be our base. And like I said, we're going to need two of those. We also are going to be cutting out two of those T-shaped pieces. Normally, I believe they tell you to cut three, but we only need two for what we are creating. And then I am cutting one of those little hill pieces and one of this back section, this kind of like screen that you get from the pop-up add-on. So to this screen, I am going in with some Lost Shadow Oxide ink to just get a really nice soft gray kind of almost white tone to these stars. I'm using the Starry Sky stencil also from Lawn Fawn and just a mini blending brush from um, Simon Says Stamp. And then I'm gonna go over this without moving my stencil using this Virtus Monroe um, glitter paste. I love this stuff. It's just a really beautiful iridescent glitter paste and I'm layering it over that light gray so that we get a little color and a little shine. Now once this is all done you really don't see much of this starry backdrop unless it's the card itself the platform is closed um, like how you would receive it but it's still enough of a pop and that glitter stands out enough that I really love it and I have no regrets. I'm gonna be using the same oxide ink with the cloudy stencil from Lawn Fawn and going in on the front and back of the platform dies to add in these clouds. Um, I'm just kind of rotating the stencil around so that I get a different cloud pattern on each kind of layer. And then I'm also gonna add a little bit of ink just to the bottom section, kind of where the die, the, the where the die gives you a score line to fold. That's gonna be the part that like sits on the table or your surface. So I added just a little bit of color there as well so that it wasn't just a stark black at the bottom. And I did this to both sides. The one that I liked more became the front panel and the one that I liked least became the back. Um, this one was the back just because I didn't like how that larger cloud kind of hit that top layer but honestly whatever makes you happy um, I just love how this oxide shows up against that black cardstock so the next thing we're gonna do is go in with the moon stencil um, I love this stencil I like to take a, my circle dies that I have are just the one is a little bit bigger than the moon outline so I like to take it and use it to create kind of uh, a rounded highlight effect. So I go in with my antique linen on that whole circle first, then add in some of those craters and add a second layer of my ink. I didn't think that those craters were dark enough, so I put my stencil right back in place and added just a little bit more of that ink. And then I was absolutely in love with how this part of the moon turned out. The next thing to do was to get all of my pieces um, folded over on their score lines. And I have made a few videos of how I put together these platform pop-up dies. Um, Lawn Fawn also has a, an amazing intro video that shows the entire process. So I will leave some of my other ones um, linked in the, like the cards up at the top. Um, and I, I'll try to make sure that I have at least one of them linked down in the description below for you. Um, but once you get everything folded over, it's super easy and you are going to add adhesive to the top tab to, of each platform as well as the bottom tab on each of those T's. And then you also need to add a little bit of tape to these side tabs because that's how you connect the two Kind of sections of the platform together and I'm also adding some of this tape to the what will be the front kind of middle part of one of these and that's also going to help to attach the two together 
So once you have your tape in place, um, I also adhered my moon with some tape just because I thought it would be less messy than trying to use liquid glue. And this little hill I'm gonna be adding to one of those T um, pieces. So I added tape to the front and back. We're gonna attach the moon to one side and I will trim off the excess from the bottom. This will help our moon to kind of look like it's rising up out of the clouds. And then it was time to assemble everything. I'm pretty sure I put my tees in backwards for the record. Um, I'm not positive, <laughs> but my, this one specifically isn't holding its pop up the same as the other ones I've done in the past. And so I'm pretty sure that my tees might be backwards. Honestly, it still works. It still sits up. It just, you don't get that satisfying kind of click feeling when you pop it up, but it's okay. Um, which is good to know if you accidentally do it the wrong way don't panic and throw it out and start over because it's probably going to be just fine so i adhered the the pieces to themselves and then you just line up the scallops across the top and adhere them together then i removed that center section all of that tape and folded my platform pop up over to make sure that the two base pieces are lined up give those a good press and then remove that final piece of tape and adhere those sidewalls together. And that is our little platform ready to go. Then I remove the adhesive from the back part of the moon and adhere that to one of my T forms. I decided to put it in the front to try to give as much space for the stars to kind of be seen around the moon as possible. But obviously you could attach it to any of the pieces. You could even add in that middle T. Um, and if you cut a third one, you could put it in the middle in that sandwich and then you'd be good to go. You could put it in the middle. Um, from my Just Plain Awesome set, I am stamping out the little mouse that is flying by itself with all of its like scarf and flying goggles on, as well as the mouse that's throwing the airplane. And then I picked one of the kind of trails, the flying little trails, and stamped that as well. While I had my Misty out, I went ahead and stamped my sentiment onto my moon. So I took the dad and thanks for helping me to fly, um, and, but it wasn't gonna fit. Obviously you can see it across my card, it doesn't fit. So I did cut the two fly off of that main larger sentiment and I want to encourage you to not be scared to do this, to make that modification if you want, because you can just line them back up and use them as one stamp later, but it also gives you more um, flexibility in where you can put your sentiment. So I stamped that onto the moon directly, and now I'm going in with my Copic markers to color in my little mice. Today I decided to go with cool grays. I just thought this would work really well against kind of those white gray clouds that we created and that really nice warm moon. I wanted a strong contrast. So I went with a cool gray and I started with a C7, then went to C5, C3, and C1. Um, I wanted a lot of shadow to my mouse on the where the darkest parts are. I wanted it to be really dark. Again, just kind of going with this night theme where everything would kind of be a little more dramatic and the light of the moon would be creating a, light, a lot of strong contrast. So I used the same colors on both of my little mice and I added some R20 to the ears and the cheeks. Then I went in with my W markers to shade in my airplanes. I just wanted these to be kind of plain white paper, but you can't just leave them plain, otherwise they look kind of like forgotten. So I added just a touch of W3, W1, and I think I even went over it with a little like W000 or double zero. And to just kind of keep, I don't know why in my brain it's red scarf is like classic for pilots, but it is. So I added a red scarf and shaded in those goggles and added a little highlight. And then it was time to die cut them out. I just picked out the three die cuts that I needed from the set. Um, I will go ahead and add my like sticker magnet and cut everything else later. Um, it was just easier for this round to just cut what I needed. I love that the dies cut out those trails so perfectly. So I ran that through my die cut machine. 
I added the liquid glue and double-sided tape just to make sure that my little mouse on the base of my platform stayed put really well. I got him secured down and then I added some double-sided tape to hold my trail in place and I did a little fiddling because the mouse's tail is there and I didn't want to look like it had two tails or something weird. I added some double-sided tape or tape runner then to the back of my mouse and then just to make sure that everything was nice and secure, I added just a tiny touch of tape between the moon and the mouse just to reinforce that. Then it was time to add my backdrop and you'll see I'm being extremely like <laughs> careful with it. It's because I didn't give it a long time to dry. I was just so excited to see how this card was going to come together that I just pushed through. So I'm taking this red tape, red line tape, uh, which is super thin and perfect for these platform pop-ups. Anytime you're going to add this backdrop, you just take off that red backing paper and it's so thin. It fits perfectly back there. And once it adheres, I've never had an issue with it coming undone or letting anything shift. So that is my platform pop-up all together. You can see when you fold it down, those stars kind of peek out. And I just love the idea of these little mice out at night kind of soaring through the sky up against that full moon. So I hope this inspires you to use some stamps and products in a new or different way or combine them in a new way for you. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me. I hope that you have an amazing weekend. And as always, happy crafting.